In this video, we're going to talk about the pros and cons and what I learned from doing my first ever virtual summit. Before we jump on the computer and take a look at the summit, which is happening right now, what? How can the summit be going on and I'm actually recording a video? Well, that's because I ended up going with a fully pre-recorded option and we'll take a look at that. But before we do that, I want to think back of when I had these grandiose plan for what would happen at the summit and after the summit. <laughs> it did not turn out that way. But I was thinking big and I had big dreams back then. Back when, I think it was the October 2020 time frame and it coming up with my lineup was not too difficult actually because I went out and got experts that cover content that I've already covered in the course but I'm not an expert so I actually went out and got experts so on your storytelling voice on how to read your audience on nonverbal communication and active listening so I went out and got those those experts and then I also wanted some experts that would talk about why storytelling matters. And then, so I would have some, that would have the how of storytelling and then the why of storytelling. So I was pretty excited about that mix. And then the piece de resistance was, I wanted to get like three famous people from different fields. So an entrepreneur, a musician or actor and someone that's in the sports. So I was aiming from like an end my let for Tom Bayou or Grant Cardone or the entrepreneur mm. and then maybe Serena Williams for sports. And then I would have really loved to have had Matthew McConaughey because he tells such great stories to come on and tell a first time story, like tell a story that I've never shared with anybody else. So I was dreaming up this incredible lineup. And I really thought that the summit was going to be the linchpin that was going to get everything off the ground for first time storytelling. So that it was going to, you know, I, was, I wanted 5,000 attendees. I was planning on charging for the summit. I was thinking big. I was very ambitious. I wanted all these great things. And that's not how things turned out. But we'll get to that first. Let's take a look at the summit. Okay, before we take a look at the summit, I actually went back into my email and I looked around when I first started contacting speakers. And it was actually in August, not October. So I had been dreaming of this summit for quite a while. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, the disappointment of what it turned out to be. <sighs> Woo! Okay, so here we go. Here is the summit. Now, the summit was advertised on the first time storytelling website. So try and make it, you know, big and bright and colorful. Now, it was changed because initially I was going to charge for the summit. But when you bought the summit for $197, you got the course, which is value at $300 for free. Well, I was not getting any takers on that offer. So after listening to a multiple podcasts, watching lots of videos on virtual summit, everybody's like, Hey, do it for free so that you can collect email addresses and then work on doing upsells from there. So I'm like, fine, I will go ahead and I will do it for free. And then when I decided that I was going to do the free version, I dropped going after those big names to do the, their first time story. So I decided to just stick to, um, the lineup that was already coming together to kind of continue to keep it simple. So people, uh, you know, could learn about the summit here and I ended up hosting it on the virtual summit platform, uh, software platform. I don't know exactly what it's called. So I first looked at this platform and 
it looked nice. And then I tried it out and I didn't, I didn't like it so much. And the affiliate program didn't work. And then I installed an affiliate program on the first time storytelling website, went through all of that. Their help support was not contacting me. So I dropped them and I started looking at other platforms, but I was not quite finding what I was looking for. And I was, I was not losing hope of what the summit was going to be, but I was starting to realize it was not going to be the linchpin I was uh, imagining it to be. So I ended up coming back to the virtual summit software. It's, I wouldn't say it's cheap, but, or I guess it's affordable compared to some of the other ones. And generally speaking, it's really easy to use. So it might be lacking some features, but all in all, super easy to use. And especially when I decided I was going fully all pre-recorded, then it got even easier uh, to do. Okay, so this is the speaker schedule, everything that's done on the back end. And what it looks like here is this is what people uh, got to see today what they're seeing today. So they, when they registered, they got an email, like they know they were registered, registered. And today they got an email giving them access to the summit. It's afternoon now. So the entire summit is open up, but this morning, only the morning portion was open. And then uh, obviously now everything is open and it's super easy uh, for people to drop in, to take a look, to follow it, to see, you know, what information and it's linked to YouTube. So all of the summit YouTube videos are actually on my YouTube channel and I will actually be making the why storytelling matter videos available in time. But so I uploaded the video to, to YouTube. I connected the link here under each of the speakers, I went ahead and connected the link to their video. Now they had the option, the speakers to come in and do a lead magnet. And they also had the option to offer a summit. So the only speaker that did that was the, was Mary Chan on uh, um, story, your storytelling voice. So disappointed in that and we'll get we will get more we will get more into that let me just give you a just a final look at how this uh this goes so like i said you have the how so and then the why so storytelling you know why storytelling matters for business then this is me giving a good chunk of uh, information that's in the book and that's in the course. So it's the element and the winning factor. So I go through, I had everything branded. I had everything when I had, uh, I use a, a company to get everything nice and with the, with the brand for the summit, uh, that ties in with the first time storytelling brand, make it more professional. So yeah, people watch the videos and they just keep going through Let's see here. Let's go to, and then you can see here with Mary, she has, she, she, her, uh, her free gift. Again, so it's, it's a shame that more people did not take my speakers did not take advantage of that. So that's what the summit looks like. It's nothing. I mean, it's nice and it's, it's simple and overall it's easy. So the, the hard bit, finding the speakers, conducting the interviews for everyone on the how side of the house. So uh, story, your storytelling voice, nonverbal communication, reading your audience and active listening. We did an interview. So I had to find the speakers and then I had to schedule their interview, record the interview and submit their videos to get branded and then add them here. And also on the why side of the house, then they, they're just doing a presentation. So I gave them guidance 
on what content to add in their presentation and where when their presentations were due. I'll say that all my speakers, they showed up for their interviews and they submitted their content on time, give or take maybe a few weeks late, <laughs> so on time, but I, I expected that. So I put in the, the fudge factor of things coming in late. So I'm very happy with the content that is as part of the summit. The disappointment really comes in in, well, getting people to sign up for the summit. Like I said, initially my goal was 5,000. <laughs> Did not come nowhere near close that. <laughs> Eventually, I lowered it to a thousand. So two months before I lowered it to a thousand, really hoping that I could get to a thousand because a couple of my speakers are semi well known, and I know they have huge mailing lists. And I was really hoping that they would share the information about the summit on their mailing list, but they didn't. So you know, you can't force them. All you can do is ask. And then if they don't, then, you know, you're SOL. I did share it. So this is the first time storytelling Facebook group. So I shared the information here quite a bit. I made a video, actually made like a little commercial for it. We'll go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and, and play a, a little bit of it. Are you ready to be more memorable, more relatable, more likable, more inspirational, more appealing, more engaging and entertaining, more convincing? It's a pretty cool little video, right? To entice people, see what they would gain from it. And I, as a matter of fact, I ran a Google ad on it. I ran a Google ad on the summit. I ran a YouTube ad on the um, commercial. That's why it's got the 693 views, but I didn't see the value of running the ads on the, the video because even though it was getting views, it was getting average view duration was 22 seconds. So if you watch that video for 22 seconds, you're not learning anything about the summit. So I was paying for them to barely, see, barely watch the video. No one subscribed to the channel. And I don't think anyone clicked through and actually uh, registered for the summit. So I spent money on that. I spent money on Facebook ads and I spent spend money on Google ads and the Google ads, uh, they did get people to the page, but the, between the bounce rate and there was no click to register again. So maybe I was getting, you know, 30 to 50 visitors a day, but they weren't, you know, they weren't buying, they weren't registering, they weren't converting. So some of it is like, okay, is my page properly set up for conversion and probably need to, you know, look deeper into that. But I was not, not a place that to, to do all, all of that, to, to be honest. So I wasted money on ads. I'm not going to lie. I definitely wasted money on ads. Same thing with the Facebook ads. Then I started, you know, so I started the networking events. I was doing on zoom events related to storytelling, same thing to get people interested, to get them to learn about it. I kicked off this facial expression challenge and it was supposed to be a 30 day challenge. And I didn't even last the 30 days. Cause to be honest, I, I thought the facial expression just repeated themselves. So <laughs> eh, that did not go as planned. I promoted it on LinkedIn quite a bit, tagging my speakers, hoping that my speakers were going to share it on their page. Then I sent them an email requesting them to share. You know, I sent them the images, requesting them to share them. And some, you know, one, three of the speakers did that. And uh, overall, the majority did not help promote the event. And I, I think 
one of the mistakes that I made was thinking that the speakers were going to be more engaged and more involved and help out with the promotion of the event. So that's definitely something that I learned is you can't count on the speakers. So let me go ahead. Let's I'll jump off the computer and I'll talk. I'll wrap up a little bit more the other the pros and cons, a little bit more about the things that I've learned. All right. So the cons of doing my first ever virtual summit is that it ended up costing me uh, quite a bit of money. So I would say probably over $1,500 for when you count the, the video editing in there and running the ads. And I will make probably no money from it. I'm hoping, so tomorrow I'm going to send out an email to the whopping 97 people that registered. And I shouldn't, okay, so I shouldn't knock down that there's 90, 97 people that registered. It's just I was going for 5,000 initially because I was, I guess, delirious. And then when I dropped it to 1,000, I really thought that was realistic and turned out I didn't even get to 100. So once again, I expected my speakers to help out a lot more with promoting the summit. So number one lesson learned is do not expect your speakers to promote your event. Where did I promote the event? I showed you all, it was on the website, I promoted it on Facebook, I promoted it on Instagram, and I promoted it on um, LinkedIn. I also posted it on Eventbrite. The problem there is that people RSVP on Eventbrite, but then didn't follow through and actually register. So for everyone that registered on that RSVP on Eventbrite, I had to add them to the email list because they didn't take that next step. I also posted it on my two meetup groups and I think I had 11 RSVP and I don't think any of them actually clicked on the link when I clearly said where to go register. And then I sent everybody a message reminding them they need to register. And um, uh, all in all, I don't think any of them actually followed through and registered. So one of the things that I've learned about events, doing events, probably going to get 10%. 30 if you're lucky with virtual event of the people that register an RSVP to show up. So that is immensely disappointing and that is just something that you need to uh, accept and live with. Now, and this is true because I did unzooms, I did, like all the events I've been doing online, that has been the trend. So many people are flaky and they don't show up. I do, not, you know, the, the, the pros, I'm happy I got it done. <laughs> when, for me personally, I can't say that it was like a massive challenge to do this because one, I'm extremely organized and I'm a, I'm a good event planner. So I have the skills that allow me to be successful at this. And you have to be good at research. So researching my speakers, emailing them, communicating with them. So you need good communication skills. And, uh, you know, and then you need to be able to, you know, to you reach out to somebody, you follow up, you don't hear from them. You have backup speakers. You're like, you gotta keep, you gotta keep moving to nail down your lineup and then move to the next step for me, which was recording the interviews. So that process overall went smoothly. It took a little longer uh, because of the, you know, the realization that I had that it wasn't quite going to be as massive as I thought it was gonna be. I needed to give myself a little bit more time to promote things. So it was really funny because I had to get my hair done twice during that time because my hair turns gray. And when I record it, when I started recording it, my hair was not gray. So as my hair was turning gray, I couldn't do, I couldn't record anything else for the summit. I guess I could have, it just would have been weird where one speaker, I don't have any gray hair and the next speaker I have gray hair where it's supposed to be all on the same day. 
Anyways, obviously people know that's pre-recorded. Nor here or there on that one. So I would say if you know, you're not a very organized person and you're not good at sending emails and following up, then, you know, that then becomes a little bit more challenging. What I did learn, my biggest takeaway is that I will never use the platform that I'm on, on again. And second, I want to have live events. So I won't be so I am currently working on an entirely new series, which is gonna la which is gonna go for seven months. It's gonna be a one day virtual event for seven months. And I'm looking for the vast majority of it to be live. And then I'm gonna have a much bigger mixture. So I'm gonna go for interviews, for workshops, for presentations and for activities so i'm gonna bring in a lot more variety and mixture into my next event so i think doing this summit got me prepped thinking about how to do a much better event in the future also i would say that it led me to taking a sponsorship class so if i if i wasn't in the summit if i didn't do the summit i might not have put the priority of doing the sponsorship class, which is turning out to be extremely educational and useful. So I'm hoping that that will lead to me getting some amazing sponsors for my series. So it's, it's a, you know, it's been a growing experience and process. And that's the pro, like that's, that's the biggest value out of it. Oh, well, also, the why for storytelling, I'm going to release those on the First Time Storytelling YouTube channel. So that's, that's six weeks of content that I don't have to worry about that I now have. So that's good. All the content from the summit is going to get added to the course. So I'm not losing that content, right? Uh, people that sign up for the course are going to get to access the experts and what they share. I'm not going to make um, the interview portion. I'm not going to make that available on YouTube. I think it's going to go into the, the course. So I think that's a wrap up for my experience of doing my first virtual summit. I will keep you guys posted as I, or I'll show you as I am planning now my next series of virtual events. And I have, as usual, big hopes, big dreams, big, um, you know, outcomes that I'm looking for, for that summit as well. So we'll see, we'll see how, well, we'll see how that goes.